Okay, you guys, first of all, the lipstick, you can just thank Kat Von D. Although Kat Von D did teach me a lesson with this lipstick tonight, which is don't just wear lipstick and not wear any other makeup because then you'll just be lips and disproportionately unmakeuped the rest of your face. But I don't know. This lipstick is like an immediate uh, test of your emergency dry skin lip system. So if you have any dry skin on your lips, which I did have a little bit, it's just like immediately very, very clear. Uh, don't think my dad's gonna like it. I bet my dad will vote no on this lipstick. And I love my father and I don't give a fuck. That's partly what I'm gonna talk to you about tonight. Even my husband, even my loving, amazing husband. He may or may not vote. He probably will abstain from voting for or against the lipstick because he's a good husband. He can be whatever kind of husband he wants. Ow, I just hurt myself. Um, the point is not the lipstick. The point is I'm 100% fucking sure that you think that this is a practice life and here's how I know that. Are you ready? Because this is really, this is really it, you guys. This is really, really it. I 100% know that you are treating your life like this is a practice run. Like somehow you're going to get to do your real life at some point when later, when you know you grow up or when you get older, when you get your shit together, when you get whatever. I wanna tell you how I know for sure that you are treating this life like a practice run, like a test run, you know, just like a, well, if I fuck this up, I can always do it over again, or this can't be the, this can't be the real thing, this can't be it. I'll tell you why I'm 100% sure that you're living like this is a practice life. Because no one, no one, no one would take their real life and do with it what you've done with it. No one, no one would ever take their real only one precious, precious, my precious. No one would take their one life and do with it what you have done with yours. That's how I know. That's how I know that you're over there thinking, oh, I must get to do it like for real at some point, like later, you know, when I've like lost the 10 pounds or when I fix my, you know, I don't know when I get the right lipstick or when I get the right level of confidence or when I read that next self-help book or whatever, because you know what? No one would take their real life and do what you have done with yours. No one would take their real life and stay at home because they got a zit on their face when they could have interacted with other amazing human beings. No one would put off doing the thing that they loved because they thought that they couldn't afford it or they thought that they might not make as much money or they thought that they might disappoint someone. No one would be a 30, 40, 50 year old human person living out some fucked up relationship with their parents from when they were little, doing things to still please that kind of person and marrying their mother and then living out the fantasy or the tragedy or the whatever it was, the horror story again and again and again. No one would be a grown ass adult living out all of their childhood insecurities, still wanting to be accepted and loved and be right and to be, you know, careful. No one would take risks on all the things where you should play it safe, where it's so clear to play it safe, like with your health, with your well-being, with your life force, and then not take a single risk where it makes absolute sense to risk it all and instead play it very safe. Like with your self-expression, like with your connectedness with other human beings, like with your relationships, like with your uh, putting yourself out there to the world, like with your passion, with your vitality and your life force. No one would take their real life and do that. But, but you are. So the only, the only conclusion that's logical is that you just don't know that you're actually operating with your one real life. You're actually spending that one real life being pissed off about stupid things that happened 10 years ago, 10 minutes ago, 10 days ago, 10 months ago. 
when you were 10 fucking years old, being, uh, you know, still kind of like reserved in your relationships, holding back, you know, at your job, because maybe this isn't exactly the right job for you. Maybe there's probably a better job out there. You should probably keep something in your back pocket that you can, you know, a card you can play, something you can, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to give away all of yourself. Oh, really? You don't? What the fuck are you going to do with yourself? You're going to drive yourself absolutely batshit nuts trying to not give yourself away to life. That's what someone would do if they thought that they were living out a practice life, if they thought that this were a dress rehearsal, if they thought that at some point in the future, not now, but later at some point, I don't know when, some point in down the road when it feels more real than this, when it feels more adult than this, when it feels more like I've got my shit figured out than this, at some point down the road, then we'll live our real life, right? Like then, you know, <laughs> it'll be different, won't it? Won't it? Won't I stop worrying about how I look and how my hair is and do I have a zit on my face and is my skin okay and do I weigh the right amount and am I wearing the right clothes and am I doing the right things and when will I stop letting any of that stop me from doing any fucking thing that I want to do that is my self-expression? When will I actually start living instead of testing, instead of thinking that my life goes on in my head when life doesn't go on in your head. Practice runs go on in your head. Dress rehearsals might go on in your head. You might rehearse your lines over and over again. But you know what? When the real thing happens, which is right now, which is actually, it's happening right now. When the real thing happens, it happens out here. It happens in community. It happens in front of a live studio audience. It happens in the world. So all that time, all of that time that you are spending being your own BFF up in your head, look, I think it's great that you like yourself. I mean, you sh hopefully you like yourself. Actually, a lot of you who are spending a lot of time with yourselves up in your head don't actually like yourself that much. So maybe stop doing that. Maybe be willing to live fully out here, out here with other humans, with other people. What are you doing holding back in your marriage, in your friendships, in your relationships, with your children, with your parents, with your siblings, with your fucking neighbors, with the people at the supermarket? What are you doing holding all of that inside of you? You guys, I was at the dry bar today, can't you tell? And this woman who was doing my hair, I have seen her there before and I always am doing my writing when I'm at the dry bar. I just need to check the battery situation. Okay, we're safe. By, by safe, I mean totally living on the fucking edge, but that's what it's all about. So I was at the dry bar today and the woman who was doing my hair, I've watched her do other people's hair before. I've seen her like she's been the stylist, you know, near me. And I, I'm always writing when I'm at the dry bar because... I'm writing when I'm pretty much anywhere. So as I'm writing, I'm like, I've recognized this woman and now she's doing my hair. And I'm just like, this fucking woman, right? She irritates the living shit out of me. Hi, if you're watching, I love you. I'm gonna get to the part where I love you. I do love you the whole time. But she, I don't know her name, but she irritates the fuck out of me. And I was like, okay, Lauren, it's time to do what you say and practice what you preach and all of that. And like, what is this? What is it about her that is so irritating? And so first I just started to like describe her to myself. Like, well, what is this? What is, because I mean, I'm a writer, so this is what I do. I try to actually like understand what it is to live the human experience. And I noticed that she has like the opposite of resting bitch face. She has like resting smirky, funny face. Like she's always just like so so entertained by something that is going on in her head, which at first seems like a perfectly laudable, you know, a trait to have. Like, oh, she's not a resting bitch. Who wants to be a resting bitch? She's like, she's always kind of mildly amused. But here's the thing. It's always solely up in her own head. And I figured, well, okay, fine. I mean, she's got it, you know, she's doing people's hair. She's not gonna be constantly just yammering at everyone. So it's, just, what, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, there's nothing offensive about just being amused with yourself. And then I realized she's a very fine stylist, as you can tell, she seems sort of overqualified. And I noticed that as she was like shampooing my hair and leading me back to the chair, she was like 
dropping these little like jokes like you know like she could definitely be a wannabe stand-up comedian she's got her little lines she's like almost seemed like she was testing them out and then the rest of the time she was fully engaged in laughing and enjoying and being amused by the things that were going on in her head and once in a while she would like tell me like she would actually express something that she thought was funny it would be like a comment about the movie that was playing or something and it was always very insightful but i just get this sense like she feels over fucking qualified which i thought okay well now maybe i'm on the right path because obviously things that you see in others that irritate you are things that you can relate to for yourself maybe things that you're living out yourself there are things where i feel like i'm way over fucking qualified and still i'm doing the things that i'm doing and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing this, there's never anything wrong. This is the real fucking thing. This is not the practice run. There can't be anything wrong. This is how it turns out. This is how it turned out. This is where we are. So anyway, I was looking at her like, huh, here's the thing. That woman has a whole world going on inside of her and she has so much expressive, like she can't even contain the self-expression that she is, but somehow, somehow, like by a feat of fucking God, she manages to contain it. Like she has repressed enough of it and pushed enough of it down. She still keeps herself amused, but it's all in the confines of her own mind. And that's not, it's so clear that that's not where it's meant to be happening. And so I was just like, wow, huh, who would ever live like that? Like who would live like that knowing that their role to play is to be an entertainer, is to be someone who just like has a, 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 a huge message of, of, of laughter and aliveness and just like vitality. And she really, she looks, she reminds me so much of certain people that I know online, or I know them in person, but from online, who change millions of people's lives by just showing up and entertaining in a way that is meaningful. Like every comment that she had about the movie that was on was very insightful. It was like, she had something to say, right? She wasn't just like, being a jokester, she was probably trying a little hard to be funny because it felt like she was kind of like testing her lines. But the thing is, that's okay. We all go wherever places we go. But this woman, she was meant to be entertaining. She was meant to be sharing that message. Look, I don't know that that means that she's not meant to be doing hair at dry bar. She's a fucking fantastic stylist at dry bar. However, what really got me thinking was, who would live like this? Who would do this where they're clearly overqualified for the job that they have? They clearly have a much deeper, bigger thing to provide to the world. Who, who would do that? Who would keep that inside? Who would be so fucking stingy and so selfish in a way to keep it all inside of their own head and not share it and not be fully the person that they clearly are? Oh, I know exactly who. You, me, her, everyone else who thinks that this is a fucking rehearsal, who thinks that this is a test run, who thinks that, well, someday we're going to get to be the thing that we are. Someday we're going to get to show up the way that we want to show up. You guys, when I was like 10 years old, I wore a sweater of my mom's. A, it was like a cashmere sweater, I think. Not really into cashmere, but it was this really expensive sweater. I'm pretty sure my dad got it for her on like some, I don't know, he went, you know, he used, it was like the 80s or 90s or whatever the fuck. He was always going on business trips to weird places where you could like, you know, it was like a business expense to buy your spouse a fucking gift, right? It was a different era. Anyhow, I think he brought it back for her from one of those trips. It was this blue cashmere sweater and it was fucking hideous the way that she wore it, like not her, but the way that it was meant to be worn. It had like this big cowl neck, which is, I guess, kind of, <laughs> frankly, the sweater would probably be cool today. I thought it was really lame the way she was wearing it. It had this big cowl neck and then it was just like a, a sweater, right? And I was just like, no, like there's something, maybe it wasn't a cowl neck, maybe it was just a long sweater. In any case, I wore the fucking thing upside down and it was the hottest, most amazing sweater. I still have a photo of myself. I mean, I was only like, 14. I, don't, I was young. It, it's weird to say it was hot, but I was like doing a piano recital, but I just felt so amazing in this sweater that was on upside down. Like the head was around my waist and the bottom was around my top and it was like, it was now sleeveless. I don't know what I did with the arms. Oh, I think I tied them like in the back around my waist. It was fucking genius. Anyway, 
the sweater looked amazing. It felt amazing. And then I remember that someone was like, oh, Lauren, you know, only Lauren would wear a sweater upside down. And instead of being like, fuck yes, I'm wearing a sweater upside down and I absolutely love it. I'm going to do this shit the rest of my life. I was like, oh, well, I tried that. I tried that and it didn't work. Someone didn't like it. They didn't like me. They did, frankly, they fucking loved me. It was one of my best friends who said that and I'm sure she said it out of love and instead I decided to take it. Like I had done everything wrong. Like I probably should never do anything crazy like that again or should be willing to, like I should hold myself back. I should be very careful. And in a lot of ways, even though some people who know me would be surprised to know, I did, I held myself back. I stopped wearing all my sweaters upside down. I don't even know. Now I'm thinking of all the things I have in my closet that I could try on upside down and who even knows what's gonna happen. The point is that who the fuck would live like that? Who would live like someone, some other 14 year old says to you when you're feeling fucking amazing, says, oh, there's Lauren, who only Lauren would wear a sweater upside down. How did I even take that as an insult? I don't even understand now. It's like the biggest compliment. It's like, fuck yeah, only me. Of course, only I would be smart enough to do that. Only I would be intelligent enough, insightful enough, creative enough to do that. But instead I was like, oh my God, I got negative feedback from someone. I better change. The only kind of person who would do that is someone who thought that they were living a test run life, that they were living, you know, a dress rehearsal. Like, oh, well, I'm gonna just try this one safe. I'm just gonna try and you repress myself and suppress myself and make myself a little bit smaller and a little bit quieter and a little bit more uh, boring and less creative. And I'll see how that goes. And then if I don't like it, I mean, it's just a test run life, right? So I can always go back and actually live. Well, Oh, would that it were that we could, but we can't. This is it. This is our only life. And so I know that you are living like it's a test run life because no one would take their real life and do what you have done with yours with it. And I can say the same thing about myself. And I can say the same thing about the girl at the dry bar. And I can say the same thing about every single person who's watching this video. So how about we flip the script? How about we, maybe we just read the fucking script and we read that like performance night is now. Performance time is now. The fucking curtain call has already happened. This is your real life. This is your one precious real life. So what are you doing with it? Why, why, why? Why are you letting the stupidest shit stop you? Why are you letting the opinions of others get in your way? Why are you letting your opinion of yourself get in your way? Why are you letting the needs of your body, like, uh, no, not the needs. The needs of your body are important because this body is gonna come with you for this journey through this one precious life. But what about the desires of your body? What about the baser desires of your body? What about the stupid, des what about the addictive desires of your body? What about the parts of your body that just wanna eat fucking candy all day and sit around and never exercise? Why, if this is your real life, would you ever be like, oh, I'm just gonna see what that's like. I'm just gonna see what it's like to live this entire life, I don't know, 20 pounds overweight, fairly dissatisfied with my body, pretty convinced that this is just how it is, this is how it is for everyone, right? There's no real option here. I don't know, I, it's not worth the effort. I don't really care. I'm not gonna do anything about it. Only only in a world where you thought by some fucking fantastical way of thinking that you're gonna have a do-over, that you're gonna have another time around the fucking whirly gig, only in that world would you try such a thing. Only in that world would you continue to indulge such bullshit and allow it to have you make the decisions that you're making. So that's how I know that you 100% are treating this like it's a practice, and it's not. It's your real life. That should change everything. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I may or may not have my shirt on upside down. I will definitely let you know if I do so that you can tell me how fantastic it is. Okay.